launched FanDuel in the summer of 2009. Um, we have over six million registered players, uh, and over half of which play in pay paid contests. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty big number. In total, there's around 50 million people play fantasy sports in North America, which is a growing market, but the market that's exploding is this one day our daily fantasy sports. What's the difference between a fantasy sports league and a daily league? Sure. Explain that. So it's a very good question. So in 2009, when we went out to the market, uh, we were competing against Yahoo, ESPN, CBS, really entrenched, established operators. Um, lots of people had tried to compete with them, but fantasy is very sticky, very entrenched operators. And so we figured we had to come up with something new. And what we identified was, particularly with sort of millennials, the, you know, the people in their 20s and early 30s, was that they felt that the traditional game had gone a bit stale. It was very slow. They also found injuries were really frustrating that you, know, you would pick Des Bryant, he'd be injured. Um, they didn't like the randomness. And, so, and they also wanted something faster. And so what we came up with was something that is fantasy sports. You pick a, t a team of players from different teams and you enter them into a contest to win a prize. The key difference from us was that in our games would only last one day. So you were just picking games for, say, tonight's basketball or this weekend's football. You weren't picking them for an entire season. And to be clear, Yahoo's fantasy sports business has been around for a very long time. Yes, since well, the late 90s or around yeah, 2000. So it's like almost a 20-year-old business. Yes, yeah. And people in that uh, play for real money. Uh, yeah, m v vast majority of fantasy sports leagues have an entry fee and prize. So they have an entry fee and a prize, mm -hmm. and it's all peer-to-peer, -peer, right? Yeah, so before, most leagues prior to us launching were commissioner leagues. The money was held by a commissioner, so one of your buddies who would have the unfortunate job of trying to collect all the money at the start of the season and pay everybody out at the end. And that's completely legal, and people are allowed to make wagers between each other. If you and I wanted to bet... Yeah. You know. So fantasy sports, just a, it's a very good question, very pertinent question. Fantasy sports is a, is a game of skill. Um, there's a very clear distinction in state law that gambling is a game of chance, and, and uh, uh, whereas something is a game of skill, if it's a skill predominant. There's also case law that backs up fantasy sports as a legal game of skill, and there's also a federal law that reinforces again that fantasy sports is a legal game of skill. It's been played since the 1960s. Um, and so whenever you have something that's been played openly since the 1960s and up to 50 million people, it was very accepted that this, was, this is something that's legal. Hey everybody, let me take a moment to tell you about GoToMeeting, which I use all week long. Yes, I'm meeting all the new potential incubator companies and looking at their products and I do it. I've taken my meeting game to the next level with GoToMeeting. It is so easy to use. I recommend it wholeheartedly. I've used it for years. It's so easy to collaborate with clients and colleagues from anywhere. And so be a meeting MVP no matter where you are. You can use your phone. You can use your tablet. You can use your desktop. It's so easy to uh, get these meetings going because, you know, you can just do it with one click. I have it in a Chrome toolbar in my Google Calendar. I put something in my Google Calendar or somebody else puts it in mine. One click, I add a GoToMeeting, and then everybody just clicks on the link, and magically everybody's in there, perfect voice over IP, or they can dial in. Um, it works so well. And one of the little features that I love to use is I will have my executive assistant on the phone with me taking notes. You can also record the call, and we, of course, do that sometimes if we want to take notes. And there's a little chat room in there, so I can chat with people and take notes, and I give startups my notes, my candid notes on what I think of their companies. So all these great little features. And one thing I love is I always have one or two people who are calling in, they're on the road, they've got noise, they don't know how to mute their phone, they forgot their headset. You, if you're in control of the meeting, can mute the participants. So you ever be on one of those phone calls and somebody's like in a wind tunnel, and you're like, who's doing that? Well, you can just go mute, boom, if you're the conference organizer. It works so beautifully. Those are my little tips for you. Um, screen sharing and passing it off to other presenters, another wonderful thing. I'll have a meeting with two or three people and we'll pass the presentation one from one to the next. It just works. It's so easy for you to step up your meeting game. So I want you to do this right now. It's time for you to put out your best performance. Go ahead and be the meeting MVP of your next meeting. Just start your 30-day trial at gotomeeting.com. Click the Try It Free button. That's Once again, go to gotomeeting.com and click the Try It Free button.
button. You are going to love it. I use it all the time. It gets my highest, highest rating. I love GoToMeeting. Okay, let's get back to this episode.